Hello, Meg Miller, an adult services librarian here at Pflugerville Public Library, bringing you this month's virtual laser cutter craft. As always, for those folks who are able to sign up, you'll be able to come and pick up your material supply kit this month in an envelope, where you'll get all the supplies you need to create this craft. What you're gonna get in the kit is two of the foldable canvas papers. You'll have one white and one black. In the Ziploc are your paints, so they hopefully don't get on your papers before you're ready. Um, the toothbrush for our toothbrush painting, and either a dowel or a skewer. In this one, I've got a dowel. And then the last piece that is in here is your stencils. And these are paper, so they're fairly delicate. Um, so you want to be careful as you go through them. I've already got one here where it's sticking up a little bit. We've got Texas, our mountain scene, and the trees to go with the mountain. And I actually also included the interior cuts for all of those. So let's take a look at the laser cutting through these stencils and then we'll get started crafting. Paper is an easy material for the laser cutters to work with. I'm actually using 95 for speed on this project and only 15 on power. It cuts through beautifully, although there is a bit of a charred edge to the paper, which you want to take into consideration when you're working with it. The first cut shows the tree stencil, and the second cut is the mountain silhouette with owl and the moon. This is the project I was thinking of when I got the black foldable canvas paper. This whirl pattern stencil was one I've had the file for a while and I thought it fit good with this toothbrush spatter paint effect. It would look great on either the black or white paper and I also think this design would work well as a background pattern with a silhouette image or text over it. The final stencil I cut is one I created myself by combining the outline of Texas and a scalable vector graphic created by our youth services librarian Amanda Cotton of the iconic Pflugerville Water Tower. So we have all of our material, you've got your stencils, your foldable canvas, paints, the toothbrush, your dowel or skewer, um, and then if you've got just a scrap piece of paper around, we're going to use that, it'll make it easier to put the paint on our toothbrush. Um, you have options, you can fold your canvas ahead of time. So this is one I did it as an example. We can go ahead and fold those and you can just do straight on that. Or you can do from unfolded and then you just may have paint all around the edges of your canvas. So that's totally up to you. Um, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some other scrap paper. We'll take a look at what our different stencils will look like as we use them. So, you will also be able to, if you had interest, you could um, use your finger, but I've provided the dowler skewer, so you might make this a little bit of an easier. Um, you can't see it, but I am wearing an apron. If you have a t-shirt you generally paint in or some clothes you don't mind getting a little paint on, um, that's what you're going to want to use to complete this project. So I actually included the insides of the cutout stencil so that if you wanted to do kind of a reverse, you'd be able to do that. So here's our paper. Here's our tree. So I can just get some paint on my toothbrush there and I'm just going to splatter. Um, you may be able to tell around the edge so I've got um, some protective stuff down so that if my paint splatters which it's going to that's kind of the point of this one then it's not going to mess up the table surface that I'm working on. Let's see maybe a little bit more paint. I really want to get the edge over here. Um, if you don't mind getting paint on your finger, you can also use your finger. 
the more paint you have on the toothbrush, the greater likelihood of getting kind of a drop that's bigger than a small splatter. So I've got some on there. Let's see, I can gently pick up my stencil here. And then you can't quite tell, but there's that hint of the tree line there. Same for the owl or the mountain or the moon. So that's one. Let's go back to our actual stenciling. Um, a napkin or paper towel, something that you can use to kind of clean off. You may decide to clean your brush between uses if you really want a certain color. So I'm actually going to start with a little bit of yellow on this. Maybe these trees aren't getting and as you can kind of see where the drips go you can tilt your toothbrush in different directions. Let's go back to green here. I need to come lower because all of my splatters are coming up here. There we go. Now I'm really getting some spots in there. You can also go back and forth. Paints. Let's go with a little yellow. And as it mixes in with the green, it's actually going to give me a whole nother color of green in there. Oh, this is just one. One of those awesome techniques. It doesn't really require too much precision or possibly even skill. All right, so I've got kind of a great spread there. So that definitely looks more like a tree line. This one was a great stencil. I really love this. Um, this is actually the Pflugerville Water Tower. One of our staff members um, got a design of that for another project and I decided to use that for this and I of course just took Texas and put that right in there so the water tower is kind of in the same area as Pflugerville. Um, for this stencil you want to make sure that you're recognizing where it's laying on your canvas so that you, you get it kind of centered for you. And this one we can just have, you know, sexist, we can just do any colors. So, gold on this. And so as I was saying, we can actually take some of the paint just out onto here and then I can get it all the way through the paintbrush. Get a lot more paint on there. Again, the more paint you're using, the bigger your splatters are going to be. And you might get one that's pretty large, like here I've got a drip on my stick. So I don't want to use that. Let's get some blue. finger so I can just come right here real close oh yeah there we got some good bigger splatters here Right. 
Let's see. There we are. There you have your splatter portrait of Texas with the Pflugerville water tower included. And so for this next one, I am actually going to go to one of my canvas pieces. Just make sure we don't have too much wet paint on here. Wipe off my dowel. Pull this back. So um, this is a foldable canvas paper that I've gotten before. Let me just go ahead and show you how we fold it. So I'm just going to tear off each of the corners. One corner. Two corners. Corner number three. And one more. Corner number four. One, and it is perforated so you could fold it to pull it off. So I've got my corners off. This is where we're at now. You can see there's pre-scored lines for each of the folds. I like to fold the farthest one down, fold the next one down. There's two folds, fold the next one down, there's three folds, and this corner has another one. So there's my fourth fold, and then that's just going to roll up. And I'm going to do that on the other side. And that's just going to roll down. You'll see there is a cross cut right there. And that's for these tabs on the side. So the lowest tabs are going to tuck right in. And actually, I recommend creasing these folds before connecting them. That way you get good, good folding. So my sides are rolled up. I've got a little cut here and a little cut here for my corners to go in. My edge flaps are tucking right in. My edges are going here. Slides right in. Other side. Slides right in. And there's one edge of your canvas. So now we've got the other side. I should have pre-folded this before I started my first tuck because I can't quite get a good fold on that end. But it will come through. So make sure that this tucks in there, that side tucks in there, fold up, it's giving me a little guff, there we go, now I've got that, now each of my ends will tuck into the slit on the edge, one, and two, and there I have my folded canvas, it can stand up, um, so I am ready for this fun pattern which is the only one I didn't do as an example so this I can kind of lay on there making sure that it feels like I'm pretty centered although you don't really have to worry too much about that right, so I'm really just gonna pour out some paint onto my paper here gray didn't want to come out. That's all right. Slide up into view here. Gray, yellow, oh, got a little gray in it, and green. All right, so I've got my paints. Tuck all of our little paper pieces aside for now. into view there we are so I've got I'm gonna start with this green again if you've got some painters tape you can definitely use that to kind of hold on your stencil if you'd like um, if not you just kind of lay it there so I'm gonna come from the top here with some green across make sure I get a lot Next color, I'm gonna go blue next. 
I've got some blue on my toothbrush. Down to the next line. Alright. Because I want some yellow and gold, I'm going to try and clear my brush off a smidge. Alright, let's get this yellow in here. My stencil moved, but thankfully it should be pretty easy for me to lay it back because I can kind of see. Alright, now we got the yellow. I think my finger being green doesn't help the yellow very much. Let's try a different finger. Gold. Again, the more I have on my brush, the more I need to be aware that I might get some bigger drips, which may be what I'm looking for. Alright. Clean off the brush some. So get some more gold out of this. I love the sparkles. Bit of metallic. Never hurt anybody. And taking my time on a project like this, I would honestly probably wash out the toothbrush in between just so I get a little bit better um, delineation between my colors. The gray here. Awesome spiral pattern. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna gently get these paints out of the way so I can bring this farther up into view. I'm just gonna kind of pick straight up with my stencil, popping off, and there we go. And as you see, I didn't get exactly around. Um, so I have a couple options. I could paint a border and make it. A specific amount um, if you've got some painters tape I could have laid painters tape around the edges and then laid this on top and given that a little bit more of a straight edge um, I can always go back with the paints that I have um, and kind of do an additional splatter around the edges so that there's just paint all the way around but I've got that pattern in the middle corner there all right something like this I might put a word or an image uh, maybe a silhouette of something onto this just as a kind of awesome little decoration I hope that you've enjoyed this laser cutter craft and thought of maybe a couple of ways that you could use this um, in projects for yourself thanks for watching